Welcome to Terence McSweeney, A Life, created by the students of Terence McSweeney Community College in Knocknaheeny. Episode 4, Muriel, A Wife Story. On the 26th of October 1982, at Oakwood Hospital, Maidstone, south east of London, at the age of 90, Muriel Frances Murphy, McSweeney died. She is reported to have said, I will be forgotten when I die. As a child, my mother kept me isolated. No local children were deemed good enough for me to play with. I was the youngest in my family. I was educated in an English convent school in Sussex. My mother didn't want me to mix with the common people in Irish schools. I felt my mother hated being Irish and unionist. At school, I learned literally nothing except how to be a lady. My family described me as a rebellious young woman. This is what happens to women who think for themselves. They're labelled. To keep them happy and to do my duty, I volunteered at the South Infirmary Hospital to help with soldiers returning from the war. This is what young ladies of my station did. I want to make one thing clear. I did it on humanitarian grounds. But I couldn't stay there for two reasons. One, seeing those damaged, destroyed young men coming home from far off battlefields. And for what? And two, what would my Republican friends think of me? I lasted six weeks. The First World War changed me. It changed a lot of people, family conflicts over my growing new nationalist politics occurred daily. My family were imperialist, conservatives, capitalists, and Roman Catholics. Sometimes I wondered which was the worst of these vices. I would spend my days in Liam Russell's bookshop. They stocked newspapers such as the Workers' Republic. And here I got to meet and become friends with Tomás McCartan and Liam de Rocha, to name two. It was also here I learned of Terence McSweeney. I heard he was giving a speech on the Manchester Martyrs. It was powerful. When I was visiting Tilly Fleischmann's home in Cork after Christmas 1915 for a recital, I played the piano to the gathering, which included Terry. Then Terry recited some poems he had composed. Afterwards we chatted. We complimented each other's artful endeavours. I fell in love with him there and then. And there began our relationship, which was vigorously opposed to from the start. My eldest brother, Nicholas, was a supporter of the unionist, Edward Carson and arch enemies of everything and everyone republic. Herefordshire in the UK, where Terence had been sent following the post 1916 roundups by the British authorities. They married in Bromyard on June 9th, 1917, a day after her 25th birthday, when she had come into her inheritance. Muir gave birth to a daughter, Myra, who was born on June 23rd, 1918, while Terence was in Belfast jail. Nearly one half of the four years of Terence's life after 1916 was spent in prison. He was arrested six times between 1916 and 1920 and he was never at home for more than a few days at a time. When Max Sweeney was arrested, Muriel was in Yacht. The first I knew of my husband's arrest was early on the Friday morning, shortly after 7 o'clock. A friend came to the house where I was staying in Yall. They had the paper with them, with Terence's arrest on the cover. As they read it out, I thought to myself, I see him sometimes because we would be in the house of friends, but indeed very, very seldom and always at a great risk. Sometimes he'd come up after dark because it was a little out of the way place, a little outside of the city. And then we would come home after dark and go away first thing in the morning. The only meal I could have him for was breakfast, and that on rare occasions. I hardly ever saw my husband at all, to tell the truth. But what could I do? There was nobody to mind the baby except myself. 
I had nobody to take her except strangers and she would not go with them.